programs, loyalty programs based only on economic incentives, monetary discounts are not those that can create durable advantage because they don't modify behavior and if they modify, they modify it only slightly and temporarily. Competitive advantages are only created by pro programs that differentiate themselves through a reward management and through a customer relationship management based on the big data. So let's have a closer look on that now. Improve the drivers of loyalty program effectiveness. So let's come back to this conceptual framework. It's important to work on the input, the design characteristics. That is reward time, Q compatibility, tangible and intangible rewards, which can be monetary based or economically based, can be hedonistic based, relationship based, information based, and functional based. These are the drivers for loyalty program management, which we will see now more in detail. So again, if the utilities are higher than the cost, then you will achieve achieve efficiency, profit, that is change of behaviors in terms of share of wallet, switching, trust, commitment, word of mouth, the purchase basket purchase. The real challenge are effectiveness profits, that is to offer better value propositions due to better customer knowledge, that is gathered by the loyalty program, and value alignment, that is better resource allocation according to knowledge of the customers and uh, to the best customers and that is according to customer lifetime value. But there are some differences that might impact or moderate efficiency, namely consumer expectations because consumers are not expecting the same rewards. Consumers do not expect money. They might also expect pleasure, hedonism, relationships or social recognition. There's heterogeneity in customer expectations. Different markets. Some markets Loyalty programs are certainly more efficient than in others. Huh? So, for example, less competitive markets. And there are uh, sector differences. We will see that in service sectors, so for example, airline or hotel sectors, loyalty programs work better than in grocery retail. Uh, it is important always before applying a management tool to see which are the sector characteristics that might impact positively or negatively the efficiency of the management tool, including a loyalty program smaller firms that have probably less efficient programs than bigger firms. It is important to see which are the uh, factors impacting positively or negatively loyalty program efficiency, so efficiency pro profits, effectiveness pro profits and value. Alignment. So it's important to look uh, at the rewards that are offered by the program to adapt the rewards according to different customers. This is operationalized here under the concept customer purchase orientation. Because all customers have different purchase orientations. In other words, we are motivated differently when we go to the shops. Some are motivated to make savings. One motivation might be to optimize the budget and to have savings in the program. Some customers want to have fun, have hedonistic motivations. Some are really searching for games, sweepstakes, and funny things when doing shopping. Probably they might be motivated by hedonistic rewards. Some shoppers want to optimize their time and are more functional oriented. This means that they are searching to reduce time in the store. They perceive shopping not nice and drudgery. They want to save time to make shopping efficient and quick in order not to lose time. These are typically the typical Shoppers who work a lot and don't have the time to, to shop. I have uncertainly avoiding customers who go into a shop because they want to reduce psychological risk, as we have already seen. The only thing they are searching for is information to reinsure them that they have done the best job. So they are probably more motivated by information rewards. Because they have high, perceive high cognitive or psych psychological costs and therefore they are searching to reduce that. And you have Social relational customers who are motivated by the fact uh, to meet other customers or meet also the brand, same stuff, and customers are clearly more interested by relational rewards. That is why it's important to differentiate the rewards and offer not only monetary rewards, but uh, as we have already seen, immaterial social rewards, material service rewards, immaterial status rewards, privileges, and that corresponds to topic orientation. And according to this differentiation, the reward value of the program will be perceived different. In other words, if you offer money discounts to economic budget-optimizing customers, 
that perceived value increase. If you offer them uncertain information, probably the value will decrease. And time optimizing customer, if you offer them functional rewards, that is priority check-in, or check-outs, check-out counters, or home deliveries, these are probably rewards that would, they, that would increase value perception. The output would be then increased loyalty, there should be an increase in repurchase behavior, but also an attitudinal loyalty that is a higher resistance against counter persuasion to competitors. So I hypothesized that if the reward corresponds to intrinsic re reinforcement that is related to the purchase orientation, there should be a positive impact. On the other hand, if the reward corresponds to an extrinsic reinforcement not related to the purchase orientation, then there should be a negative impact on loyalty. The theory of self-determination is a motivational theory, which applies quite well all our behaviors and, and motivations. Intrinsic motivation refers to initiating an activity because it is interesting and satisfying in itself to do so, as opposed to doing an activity for the purpose of obtaining an external goal, which is called extrinsic motivation. Actually, we have some activities for which we are intrinsically motivated, activities in, in which we are really interested in, and we do them with a, without any effort, because we like these activities, and they are current to our life. And we have extrinsic activities, which we do, we have to do, and we do them yeah, for extr extrinsic motivators, because we don't like the activity, for example, money. So if we work, if we do a job we don't like, the only motivation we do the job is extrinsic motivation, unless we would not do it. It's not really giving us pleasure, so we only do it for money. Whereas if we do a job we like, the intrinsic motivation is quite high. The money becomes secondary. What I told you already, for the B-factual theory of Herzberg, comes also from human resource management. So some activities give us pleasure, so we're intrinsically motivated, and we do it more efficiently. For other activities, we're extrinsically motivated, we do it only for an intrinsic motivator. Intrinsic motivators are autonomy, competence, and relatedness to the task. So autonomy, the higher the autonomy in the task, the higher the intrinsic motivation, and the more the activity will be done on the long term. The more the activity gives competence, the higher the intrinsic motivation. And the more the task is related to the final outcome, final objective, the higher will be the intrinsic motivation. DG also find that granting external rewards for motivation undermine intrinsic motivation. So external rewards undermine autonomy and thus undermine motivation on the long term. This theory actually comes from the science of pedagogy. DG and Ryan who invented this theory, they applied it to the motivation of children. Actually, most educational systems are based on extrinsic motivations. In other words, you're clearly primed in this direction because you're all, all looking at your marks. Uh, the marks are actually the extrinsic motivators that motivate you to work. So you work because you have an ex exam, and for the exam you need a good mark. If you don't have a good mark, you have a punishment, either by, your, uh, either by it's, it's, it's if you have to repeat your year, if you have to redouble your year. These children, when they learn, they learn of the short term and not of the long term. We are, we are all working only for the exam, and after the exam, three weeks or four weeks after the exam, we have forgotten everything. And so it's not very efficient in terms of uh, learning. So they did some, some studies, uh, so two groups. One group was stimulated with re financial rewards, uh, so the children got money for good marks. And the other groups, uh, they tried to make them understand that they learn for life and not for the school. They gave them Pleasure, they, they try to make them understand why they learn. Huh? Because sometimes even you probably, yeah, at least young children, they don't know why they learn. So actually, the results of the children were stimulated in, intrinsically, huh? so with really motivation to learning, had better results on the long term than children who are motivated with money. And, and the, what they found also is that money or extrinsic motivation, motivation destroys uh, long term motivation. So in other words, if you give Money, people focus on the money and not on the learning. And they found the same results for sportsmen. And so with the more you give money, the sports people are focusing on the money and not on the sports challenges uh, itself. How to apply this theory to marketing? Some extrinsic motivators destroy 
motivation. That is why the lawyer program does not work. So if you're not intrinsically motivated by this reward, then there's actually, in the best case, no effect. But it's also by the destruction, because the reward costs money. But if you're intrinsically motivated, then you will have a long-term Im impact. That is, for consumers engage into a behavior are motivated on the long-term, because actually it is for the activity's sake that they're engaging into the behavior. That is why the theory is used also in marketing. It is important to intrinsically motivate the customer. The next important concept and theory is the theory about purchase orientations because customers are heterogeneous and have different specific motivations which are called purchase orientations. It is based on the theory of perceived value. And so for cu some customers, economic, economic rewards of value is more important. So we have an economic purchase orientation. For other customers, Hedonistic or experiential and pleasure is important, so we have a hedonist orientation. For other customers, the fact that the purchases are done quickly and efficiently is a functional purchase orientation. For some customers, the relationships and social relationships are important, so we have the social relational purchase motivation or orientation. And there's a final purchase orientation based on uncertainty avoiding or apathetic purchase orientation, which means that customers are searching to be reinsured and avoid risks, and that is why they are loyal to the brand. And these customers are differently motivated by the different rewards. Which brings me to the rewards. And so the rewards can be economically, they can be hedonist, means that customers have Pleasure, for example, through sweepstakes or, for example, to, through games. They can be functional, uh, that is, uh, make shopping more convenient and quick and efficient. They can be social relational rewards, which means that the rewards bring customers the satisfaction to have contacts with other purchasers or with the sales staff. By applying self-determination theory to our loyalty program context, we formulate the following hypothesis. If the reward corresponds to intrinsic reinforcement or motivation, that is related to a purchase orientation, we should uh, observe a positive impact on behavior. If the reward corresponds to extrinsic reinforcement, that is not related to purchase orientations, there should be a zero or even negative impact on behavior. Precisely, for example, if a customer is economically orientated as an economic purchase orientation, then economic rewards should correspond to an intrinsic reinforcement and have a positive impact. Various hedonist, functional, relational rewards should be extrinsic reinforcement and should have a negative or zero impact on behavior. Or for a customer being hedonist orientated, Hedonist rewards and perhaps also relational rewards should have a positive impact. Various functional rewards and economic rewards or informational rewards should have no or negative impact. For a time optimizing functional shopper, functional rewards should be an intrinsic reinforcement and thus impact positively loyalty. Various Economical rewards or relational rewards should be extrinsic reinforcement and thus have no or negative impact. For uncertainty avoiding customers, information should have should be an intrinsic reinforcement. Various hedonist or functional rewards should be extrinsic reinforcement have a negative or zero impact. And finally, for social relational orientated shoppers, Social rewards or relational rewards should have a positive impact on loyalty. Various economic rewards and functional rewards should have a negative impact on loyalty. So we tried to test it in empirically. We did different surveys. So we started with two grocery retailing chains, Leclerc and Intermarché, with a sample of 3,000 customers. Then one year later, I managed to do it with Air France. We surveyed passengers with a sample of 1,300 customers. We replicated it at ITAM. ITAM is a 
closed chain, and we did it at Douglas, the perfumery chain, with 1,240 customers. Okay. Replication actually is very important in science because we wanted to know if the results of grocery retail hold also in the airline, in the closed retail, specialized retail, or perfumers. Then we can really say that uh, the results are similar, the contexts are different because in grocery retail, you're less involved into the purchase act than when you buy a perfume. So we want to see the sector differences. We used different scales, which were established. So with the purchase orientation, there are scales that exist, and you can measure them with 20 items. Perceived value, we measured it also with different scales. And purchase behavior, we measured it with established scale. And we used then factor analysis, confirmative factor analysis, and and structural equation model. Uh, this is a summary of uh, all sectors. So actually, there are some sector differences, but they're slight. So we can uh, transpose the results to the different sectors. We confirmed our hypothesis for economic oriented shoppers who are value <coughs> discounts when offering economic information, the rewards. You have a significant positive effect on purchase intensity and resistance against counter persuasion. On the behavioral part of loyalty and the attitudinal part of loyalty. And you have some non-significant effects, for example, hedonism, convenience, has no impact. But for these type of customers, if you offer them information about, for example, sales promotions, good deals, and if you offer them good deals and discounts, then they're intrinsically motivated, and uh, this has a positive impact on loyalty. If you offer them relationships and hedonism and convenience, it has basically no impact. And when targeting these customers, you have to give discounts and how to have these discounts, for example, emails showing them the good deals of the week. Social relational shoppers, so those are interested by relationships, privileges, status. So these customers are motivated intrinsically by recognition and relationships. And you can see all the other rewards have basically no impact. You have apathetic customers who are those interested by functional rewards, rewards that make shopping easier and quicker. So these shoppers are actually interested by convenience benefits. That is priority check-in at the airport, priority pass-through at the passport control, priority boarding, priority disembarking, rewards that make the consumption easier and quicker are appreciated. In the grocery retail, concerns priority checkout counters. Self-scanning, where you scan in the store, the goods you come to the, to the checkout counter are directly paid without losing any time at the checkout counter. Because they're interested in saving time and they're interested in uh, to make shopping more efficient. So convenience has an important, significant impact. You can see that recognition and relationship and also had it, has, has even a negative impact. You can have counterproductive effects. The brand store loyal customers are interested by recognition and relationships, but also by information. That is information that shows them that they have done the good choice to decrease cognitive energy, that is to decrease the risk. They want to be reinsured that they have done the good choice. All the other rewards have no impact. And hedonistic customers, that's a positive impact to recognition and relationships, which seem to be appear also as a hedonistic reward, but also hedonism. And information, the necessary information, how to participate in games, sweepstakes or other hedonistic experiences. Have a positive impact on purchase and attitudinal loyalty. Right, so in summary, differences according to shopping motivations. If the reward corresponds to an intrinsic motivation, then there's a positive impact on loyalty. If the reward corresponds to, to an extrinsic motivation, then at best there's no impact, there might be even a negative impact, which shows again the import importance of personalization. Because the more you personalize, including the loyalty rewards, the more you have a positive impact on loyalty. If you want to learn more details about this research, then I invite you to read the article The Impact of Reward Personalization on Frequent Flyer Programs, Perceived Value and Loyalty, published in the Journal of Service Marketing.